how we're gonna nail that better, Mike. I gotta figure something out. I don't know, I thought it worked pretty well. Yeah, yeah, but I missed the beginning of the song because of the way that I like set the thing up. Oh well. Dad and dad are fighting. <laughs> Good evening, folks. Um, we have more people who have started the, the show tonight, which is kind of nice. Because um, I spammed a bunch of Discord servers, so Woo. forcing my friends to uh, pay attention to us. Um, I see DSC <laughs> there already. Hey, buddy. I don't know if you saw the first one, but we're, we're playing more Vason tonight. Um, it's okay, because nothing from last game is carrying over really. Uh, although we do have to talk about some stuff, which is kind of cool. Uh, my name is Cody. I'll be the game master tonight. Um, I got my friends Mike and Zoe here with me. Uh, oh, he saw the first one. Oh, perfect. And I can bring in all the continuity I want, and it'll make perfect sense. Um, which is great. Okay, we're gonna drop the music as soon as that command carries through, which is nice. <laughs> And uh, I am joined by my friends, Mike and Zoe. How are you both doing tonight? I'm Zoe. Enthusiastic. In case you couldn't read their little name cards. <laughs> yeah. Um, Not everyone can read those. Yeah, that's fair. We might have blind um, viewers. That's true. Tonight, we are continuing on our adventure across the uh, lovely country of British North America, otherwise to us now it is known as Canada. Um, last time you guys dealt with a, a lovely invisible man um, who shot people using the power of love. Um, and uh, Might be questionable. Ultimately, um, just needed to be married to solve all of his problems, uh, like, yeah. like everybody says in life all the time, right? can feel Zoe's eye daggers through the computer at me, right? Which is why it's perfect. Um, <clears throat> As a child of divorce, so I don't... <laughs> um, Zoe, I'm sorry if this game is triggering for you, but you need to stick around for it for our fun, okay? <laughs> I'm here against my will. Somebody, please save me. <laughs> don't listen to her. She's fine. Um... <laughs> So yeah, so uh, after that, you guys would have been uh, picked up by, I believe I named him, um, sometimes it's better not to be married. Yeah, probably. Who knows? <laughs> Don't, I'm, I'm not going to say that for sure. Cause I, I but like for an invisible him. man, he yeah. needed to be married. No, he needed to be married. Definitely. 100%. <laughs> did we learn, did he become visible after he got married? or? I don't think we went to the wedding. Yeah. All Did right. we get invited to the wedding? The wedding happened same day. Uh, we'll say sure. Um, so at their lovely little, in their lovely little clearing with the lake and the the lodge kind of off to the side, um, they brought in a a, a village elder um, from the tribe, and uh, they they necessitated the marriage ritual. No, that wouldn't make sense. They would have had to take them back to probably the long house, which wouldn't be too far. Yeah, sure, you guys are invited to the wedding. Why not? It's fun. Um they 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 people people are asking, yeah, what did you guys bring as gifts? That's the real question. Deer meat. <laughs> make a deer out of sticks and give it to them. Wow, great, great gifts, guys. I'm totally gonna we just met this man table. today. <laughs> We're his only friends, and the only thing we know he likes is deer. Hey, 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 he's got a sister. She's his friend. <laughs> anyway, yes, the marriage goes off the afternoon. Uh, you know, the, the sun kind of starts coming down, uh, you know, into its kind of descent um, as the afternoon happens and the sun uh, kind of shines down through the, the clearing around the longhouse and um, the, the, the shades kind of nice and dappled around as the two 
uh, exchange uh, marriage vows, um, he in a language that you guys don't seem to understand, and and she in in English. Um, and uh, as as you're watching, there's suddenly Does like the the shimmer. bride can understand. We're gonna skip over that. The shimmer seems to descend down him, um, and suddenly everybody in the crowd gasps. And you hear somebody say, "Oh my God! I thought she was alone up there, or or marrying the the elder, or something. I don't know. Anyway, um, and uh, oh, I guess she has a family." Yeah, but they're not there for some reason. Oh, so they She's just invited they strangers care. to the wedding? Oh, so it, it, they're 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 strangers. very they're very communal people, and and you know yeah. you uh, you guys did help um, stop his murdering uh, and help him find love, so that's a good thing. Wonder what would have happened if you married him, Mike. We'll never know. Nope, you won't, and that's too bad. Um, but that's fine. So after what that, did they have for the the reception? Did we get oh some good God. food? Like, did they give us like a a party gift or anything for going to the wedding? Uh, they had um, they had hunted a large wild boar. Um, which had been, uh, you only found out after the fact, uh, as you guys had been sitting and watching the lovely, uh, ceremony taking place. Um, you started to smell, uh, what you think might be reminiscent of, like, bacon, um, but you couldn't really tell where it was coming from, and then it was only after the wedding, or after the ceremony, that you realized, uh, they actually dug out, um, from a pit, the boar where it had been cooking underground in just kind of a bunch of coals and, and wrapped in um, mm. in leaves of some sort. Um, it's it's pulled out and it's glistening and crackling. The skin is just kind of um, like uh, stretched and, and is puckering and kind of like splits in some places as you see the juices from the meat run out. Um, it's not really spiced. But you guys are from Scandinavia slash England, so <laughs> who cares? We only know tastes bland like... food anyway, so yeah, it, it tastes maybe gamier than you're used to. Um, but overall, it's pretty delicious, I would say. Hope Any no one other? came to the stream hungry, because. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean. If you didn't, I'm sorry. I will ruin everything for <laughs> He's you not sorry. at all times. I'm not sorry. Um, <laughs> that was a fib. <laughs> does anybody have any other stupid questions about this stupid made-up wedding that I'm making up right on this board? <laughs> what did he wear? Uh, yeah, what's the oh priest's name? Or the elder's name? I'm not even going to try, okay? I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm purposely eschewing native names for this whole game because... I already feel too white doing this. I don't <laughs> want to make it worse, okay? Um, his name we'll give him is is Jim. <laughs> Perfect. There you go. I hope you're satisfied. I am. Thank you. Thank you, Hillary, uh, for for forcing them down this path and making this worse. Did anyone cry at the wedding? Well, I assume they all did. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Dry in the clearing. Oh, man. Ingrid <laughs> just, she bawled the whole time, I bet. It could have been me. I could have been a bridesmaid. Okay, but then you guys remembered you have to go catch your boat, um, which is Oh, fine, yeah, so we are going to be left. late for our yeah, boat. Yep. <laughs> oh, too bad. Cool wedding, guys. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, the, the weddings typically last five days, and you only get to be there for what? one. Oh, no, too bad. Sorry. There was five days of wedding? 
hold on. <laughs> what do you do in those five days? No, 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 no. See, Hillary, I'm sorry. Your questions aren't stupid. Just my two players' questions are stupid. I appreciate everything from chat. These two have to, you know, play with me. The rest of you guys don't. <laughs> Again, I'm forced to be here against my will. I'm Please, sorry. send help. I'm sorry. I like you guys. I, I'm, I'm gonna. I don't, I'm not comfortable doing that and being that mean all the time. Um. Anyway, yes, you guys have. Uh, you guys have uh, have made your way back to the uh, town of Halifax. I guess it's the city of Halifax. Uh, still, it's not very big. Um, and you are met at the dock by one John Johnson, um, who yeah, is, John is Johnson. standing near his boat, where the letter definitely told you to go, and that is definitely the name I used from the first uh, session. Um, and it's definitely not, because I don't remember the name of the guy I offhandedly mentioned in the first session, which is fine. Um, and uh, he, he looks the two of you up and down and is just like, uh, yep, pretty sure you guys are who I'm looking for. Mm-hmm. Okay for us. Great. I thought okay. we were supposed to be looking for you. Uh my name is my name is John. This is my boat. And he uh uh he, he um gestures towards a very small boat, um, full of a bunch of bags which seem to be carrying mail of some sort. Just like look, Does your I boat have I, a name? I'm sorry, I don't normally take passengers, um, but uh but you know, um, I've I've been I've been asked and 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 given some some coin to transport you guys uh, up the river to um, to Toronto there. So we'll we'll make it happen. Don't worry about it. Uh, yeah, my my boat's name is Winds of Adventure. Right on the side of such a small boat. Well, it's not. It's it's written across the back. But you clearly know your boat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll get on. As, as you step on, um, it's it's a steam vessel, and uh, you know, down kind of on the underside of the boat, there is basically just one room um, with a single bed, and um, that's about it. He's got a he's got a picture. On like the wall, hanging on the wall of of Mr. Johnson with some kind of woman and some children. Um, just like, all right, well, get comfortable, you two. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna heave ho. Just waiting for my last bag of mail to show up, and uh, we'll get on our way. Okay. Anything else you guys need? No. Okay. Any any mail for me? Uh, who are you? Ingrid. Because I mean, Mort? you guys didn't really like introduce yourself stuff. So that that's okay. That's fine. Whatever. I assumed um, you had our names since you know you were looking for why us. Why would I have? All I was given was descriptions and and told to to transport to um two people who obviously do not look like they are from around here, uh, further up river. So. All right. Well, hearing nothing else, let's uh, let's kick off. And he kicks off the dock. The boat uh, starts winding its way um, slightly back up, kind of back out to uh, sea a little bit, and it kind of holds the coast. Um, it's a long journey. Um, takes a couple of days as you guys kind of round the coast, go around Cape Breton, um, and and kind of up. Around the uh, is that part of Quebec? I can't remember. But you basically you head into the mouth of the Saint Lawrence and you start to uh, make your way down the Saint Lawrence River. Um, but as you kind of come into the mouth of it, Mister Johnson, after about two days or so, uh, pulls into port, um, where you see a, a bit of a bigger looking city. It's just kind of like, ah, oh, well, you know, guys, again, small boat, 
Um, so we're just going to stop and grab some more supplies. I got to take some mail out and pick up some more. So, um, this you is know, not Toronto. Th this is not Toronto, son. Sorry to say that. Um, if you if you listen closely, you can hear the uh, the natives or not the natives, but the um, you can hear the uh, the citizens of this here lovely town speaking French. Um, you'll know you're in oh, Toronto okay. when you start hearing more more English. There you go. That that's good. Um, so look, I I need about a day. I'm gonna go visit some people. Um, so meet back here then. Cool. All right. Thanks. He eyes off and kind of walks off. You hear him like passing by someone who he seems to know on the dock. He's just kind of like, you're never going to believe these people who I got riding on my boat this time. What have I gotten myself into? Well, what are we going to do for the day? I don't know. Do we? We don't have any supplies. No, we're probably going to have to find a place to sleep. We could sleep on the boat. Could. Could sleep on the boat. As you guys are standing on the dock, uh, not really sure of what to do, um, you do hear a man uh, kind of standing not too far away from you guys talking to um, what appear to be another group of sailors. He's just kind of saying, like, come on, like, you telling me that none of you, uh, none of you salty sea dogs can figure out what this whole issue is? Sounds like they got an issue over there. It's been weeks and none of you know what's, uh, what's going on, where all the fish have gone. I mean, come on, it's a big ocean. They can't just have, like, disappeared, right? You hear one of them basically being like, I, I, I don't know, Mr. Mayor, it's seems like a bigger problem than uh, any of us can figure out well i i i i tell you what i would be willing to to give five equivalent you no know, 100 equivalent dollars to anybody who who would be willing to help try and figure out what's going on around here If we got that kind of money, maybe we wouldn't have to sleep in the boat. What's wrong with sleeping in the boat? We have paper cuts from the mail. <laughs> they burn. <laughs> just Ingrid just like lifts her sleeve and there's just <laughs> tons of them. So many. This is my ankles too. <laughs> Somebody walking past. Woman, cover those ankles. <laughs> she must be an occultist. To the mail. <laughs> <laughs> I can't go another night with the mail. <laughs> All right. <laughs> My hands are so dry from the parchment. <laughs> The group, the group around the man has dispersed, um, and I, I don't know. Are you guys approaching him, or what's what's your deal? Yeah, I'll approach him. Uh, oh, uh, hey, hello. What's the uh, what's the dealio with these fishes? You guys aren't from around here, are you? Nope. Okay, well, let me introduce myself. My name is uh, George O'Kill Stewart. Um, I am mayor of this here lovely town. Um, lovely, lovely. The, I mean, the big, the big problem is, is that obviously, as you can see, uh, the city is um, situated right beside the ocean, and for some reason, all of my fishermen are coming back empty-handed. Uh, it's been happening for a couple of weeks now. And, um, you know, we could get away with, uh, just other foods that we're farming and such, but, um, see the, 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 uh, the legislative group, um, is, is heading to the city, 
you know, very soon in order to allow the governing of this lovely country to continue to happen. And I really need to, you know, make this place look as prosperous as possible in order to, you know, hopefully one day eventually become the uh, the capital of this here beautiful country permanently. Um, so let's, uh, I'm really, I'm really hoping we can kind of resolve this problem. Um, also, you know, I don't want people to start and stuff. That's kind of important. Mm-hmm. So I'm sorry, what are your names? I'm Ingrid. You kill. Cool. Okay, great. Appreciate that. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm sorry. I, I don't really have much to go on. Um, the 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 only other thing that that seems to happen is the uh, some of the fishermen um, report being pelted by rocks when they're on their way back to the the docks. Um, I mean, I think it's just it's just kids being kids and stuff, but they swear they don't see anybody throwing them. So I don't know. Are any fishermen planning to go out today? Uh, well, I mean, you're you're, you're back kind of late, so no. Um, they're they're all done for the day. Um, you, you realize it's kind of around early afternoon, which means yes, most fishermen would have been back from a potential morning uh, morning attempt. What about dusk? Well, I mean, most of them are just too. Uh, feeling too pessimistic about it to be willing to go out at dusk. Where would we go to find fishermen to see who we can convince to take us out on the waters tonight? Well, uh, you you could try, you know, probably that bar over there, and he turns around and you see a, a bar kind of located right on the edge of the pier. Um, so I guess I should have described it a little bit better when you guys were kind of Rounding about, um, the, 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 the city itself is located in kind of a low plain. Um, there's a couple of really nice big hills surrounding it. Unlike Halifax, none of the, the hills have buildings on them. The, the city itself is denser and is located in kind of this, this small plain underneath, or sorry, uh, just behind kind of the docks. The docks in this area are a bit smaller than Halifax because it seems like they're not uh, needing to accompany you know, as uh, as large vessels as Halifax had, but it makes up for kind of a smaller dock area by having more houses, more uh, more people. It seems a little bit more akin to a city that you would have been used to seeing back in uh, in Europe, um, but the forest is much closer. Oh, it is Quebec City. And they call it Quebec City. Mm-hmm. Perfect. So should we go to the Fishman Bar? That's literally what it's called. It's called the Fishman Bar. <laughs> Knew it. <laughs> well, how can you not go to a, a tavern? Because it's because it's uh, it's got a, an English name in Quebec City. It's a really terrible. No, no, no. It's because it's the really terrible English translation. The actual French name is like Poisson Un, Poisson Un Bar. I don't know what bar is in French. So they literally just call it the Fishman Bar. So all the English fishermen. The Fishman Bar? Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Can't wait to go to Fishman Bar. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's go check out Fishman Bar. The fish man bar. You walk in. It's a pretty, um, pretty traditional tavern um, that you would have been more akin to seeing um, in in port areas. It's not like a traditional kind of British tavern. Um, it's very kind of dark, dingy. There's a lot of windows, but there's also a lot of smoke inside from people smoking cigarettes and whatnot. Um, the the atmosphere seems kind of uh, quiet, uh, or at least quieter than you would maybe like. Uh, there are 
we'll say maybe about 10 tables scattered kind of throughout the room and a bar towards the back. Um, and at each of the tables is, uh, we'll say, a group of between two and three um, individuals. And they're all fairly kind of similar looking, I guess, um, mainly all white dudes uh with what? with kind of darker hair uh wearing you know uh wearing uh, suspenders and 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 work shirts and anyway we're to looking to go fishing yeah <laughs> stand tall in the center of the room like good afternoon good fishmen we are searching for a kind fishman to take us out on the waters to see where the fish have gone you please see a number of them come of... this way to show <laughs> your interest look at you guys and they just kind of go at tabernacle and they turn back to their drinks and their their <laughs> some of them are like playing cards some of them are rolling dice um there's a there's a, a a slightly large uh maiden kind of winding in between the tables delivering more drinks to people as they go um but you do see as you kind of turn around you see a a younger looking man um uh, with red hair and a a cap on his head um not looking like you know like he's gonna jump at the offer necessarily, but he's kind of waiting. He's looking and he's waiting. Again, good fishmen, we are trying to replenish the fish stores in the ocean. Please, if you are willing to aid us with a trip out onto the waters, we would be forever grateful, dear fishmen. Yeah, they're not. They're not gonna. They're not going to listen to you. We all listen to people. And it's the youth. <laughs> yeah. What he said, we're not. Look, look. Uh, just buy buy me a drink and come sit over here and uh, we'll, we'll, we, can, we can talk about figuring your situation out. You also notice that he's at you have money for a drink? I don't have any money. Absolutely not. (laughs) I like... Water skin. I would like to conjure tricks to manipulate this man into thinking that we have provided him an alcoholic beverage. Okay, what do you need to uh, roll to do that? I can roll uh, manipulation. All right, and that would be... uh, Why don't I have all oh, those skills? Uh, so that's an empathy manipulation roll. Go ahead. As many dice as I have in empathy only or empathy or empathy manipulation only or. Okay. Oh, God. Yeah. Big money. Where is the getting? Big money. What'd you get, Zoe? Three successes. Nice. Oh. You um in- Ingrid kind of whooshes her hands and like oofs a glass filled with uh with amber liquid into her hand to the man whoa jeez i didn't know uh i didn't know trish was bringing out the good stuff now 
Uh, thanks for that, Miss. I really, uh, really appreciate that. Um, so, so you're what, going you guys, to take us to the water? You guys said you wanted to go fishing. Well, look, but you see, that's the problem right now. We can't. There's no. There's no point in going fishing because the fish aren't biting. You know. No, we want. We want to go so that we can bring the fish back. Well, like, where, where are you going to plan on going? Wherever the fish usually are, that they're not. Okay. I know it may not make sense now, but it will. She kind of like squints a little bit nonsensically or, or wonderingly at you and kind of like, you know what? The boss's boat isn't being used for anything else, so screw it. And he downs the rest of his beer and stands up. All right, if that's what you want to do, come on, let's go. Did it. Right. <laughs> let's take my head and follow along. Ingrid excitedly follows behind him. He yelled, you know, trudges behind the group. Um, he brings you to a, a fishing vessel on the dock. Um, the 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 HMS uh, tavern wench. Um, and uh, starts to untie it. Kind of like, okay, now now look. And he, he pulls out a map. And it's like, okay, we're right here. And you see him, like, drag his finger along a little bit. And he's like, so so we go for about a half hour out up here. And typically this is where we find there's a little lagoon where uh, we typically get a large, a lot of catch um, up there. So, you know, look, I say we go out there. We, we don't try and go anywhere further for right now. We go out there and we take a look. and. Um, You'll you'll get your your evidence or whatever it is you're looking for, and then we come back, okay? Okay. Okay, Good fine. Way. Great. And he starts. You know, Eagle looks <laughs> so impressed. He gets the boat going, starts driving out, or starts you know kind of sailing out. The whole time he's just kind of like, so where are you guys from? What are you doing? What? Well, I mean, I've lived in my whole life so far. I mean, I'm only 18, but you know, my my dad's done a real good job trying to raise me up to, uh, you know, be a good sailor. That's what I'm trying to do. I, uh, how about what about you guys and your parents? You got a good relationship with your parents? No. No, I mean, my relationship with my parents was really difficult too. It was a whole thing, like you know, just. And dad always wanted me to go into the seminary because that's the whole thing he wanted to do. And, you know, I I just really wasn't feeling it, especially over here. I mean, there's no political movement from the seminary. It's, I was thinking about being a lawyer. That's kind of what mom wanted. But I was never really good with the whole book learning stuff and and everything like that. Uh, you, you know what that's like? Yeah, I don't have any books. Oh, that's too bad. Books are nice, especially when you're in an area where you know you need to light a fire for something, and you really don't, you know, you don't have anything else to use. Um, they burn, they burn up really good. The teachers don't like when you use your books for starting fires. Yeah. And then before you know it, you're there um, as his <laughs> dulcet tones uh, just match the entire, <laughs> make the entire trip like nothing. I just imagine eagles. Eagle's just sitting there, dagger eyes at him the whole time. <laughs> just like, I wish I wasn't on this boat. You hey, what's why it's it's not scary. scare away the fish, right? <laughs> I mean, man, we're way up here. They're underwater. Sound doesn't really travel that way because, you know, there's, there's a whole transitive property for the waves trying to go through the water and stuff. Hey, hey have, have you ever been hit by rocks while you out fishing? Yeah, no, just the other hit day. By rocks all the time. <laughs> yeah, we got hit just the other day. We were trying to, you know, bring a load back and just just got pelted by it. I mean, who, boy, what do you know, right? Where were you when that happened? Well, we were we were kind of right about here, but you know, I and he kind of like scurry to the edge of the boat and I just start looking over. He kind of like gestures around. He's just like, see, like normally we'd come out here and the water would be absolutely like, like churning with fish for us to pick up. But there's just, there's nothing around here. Mm -hmm. 
Um, fine, Zoe. If you're if you're trying to scan things, mm -hmm. uh, feel free to do an observation roll for me. So that's observation. observation. Okay. Now, you said this is like a lagoon. Oops, sorry. Sorry, was that sorry? Uh, one success. Okay. Um, you don't see anything. I will keep looking. Um, sorry, I was going to ask, like, how far out in the water are we? Um... You mentioned this was a lagoon. Does that mean there's land nearby? Yeah, so you're you're probably we'll say about um fifty feet from like a cliff face. Is there any pathways up the cliff no there doesn't appear to be you see a bunch of like holes in the cliff face as though like you know they were kind of bored into by birds or something um, but you don't there's nothing else really uh that seems like it could be used to kind of scale the cliff face do we hear anything or is it just kind of silent on the water? Um, it's, it's, I mean, you're on the, you're on the ocean, right? And into the St. Lawrence River. So it's pretty, uh, the sound of the water is pretty loud. Speaking of which, thank you for reminding me. I forgot my ambient sounds for this episode, which is why it probably sounds too quiet. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> My immersion. Yes. I'm sorry I'm ruining your immersion, Zoe. Ooh, whimsical. Yeah, I try. It's Quebec. Quebec's always whimsical. Um <laughs> How deep is the water here? Uh, I will say you can't tell just by looking down into it. Uh, your, your, your companion, who, who tells you his name is Max, um, you know, I mean, I don't, I don't really know, but I think it's probably about, uh, I don't know, 50 feet deep. Shall we cast How the line? Oh. Do it, do it, do it. I mean, I mean, sure, we we can pulls out a pulls out a fishing line. I will. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Well, I mean, I don't know what else you guys are really kind of waiting for, but uh, if if it helps, you know, I like to pass the time by uh, telling stories. Do you guys have any fun stories that you like to talk about? Or anything. I will go to the edge of the boat and just stare into the water where his line is cast. Is there any way to where to put a shore nearby? Um, two hundred and fifty feet at his deepest point. Uh, sorry, Mike. A shore nearby? Yeah. Like, is there anywhere that we can make landfall? No. Hmm. No, it's pretty. Um. The, the, the cliff face goes right into the water. Um, yeah, and that's the kind of the closest land. What's the top of the cliff face look like? Uh, it's covered in trees. Now, I mean, you know, while we're waiting, I mean, this is one story that I always love to tell, which is about the, this time my uncle swore to me that he caught, 
you know, a fish that was like three feet long. And I, I said to him, there's no way that's possible. Like uh, fish, fish that big don't, don't live in inland lakes. Like it's only way out in the ocean where you're going to get something massive and stuff. But no, he just always told me, he, you know, he swore that that was the thing that was going on. And then suddenly he gets hit in the back of the head with a rock. Um, and he's just kind of like, ah, what? See? <laughs> And then um, suddenly there are there a, a bunch of rocks. Oh. Yep. And there are now a bunch more rocks kind of sailing through the air. Uh, Where are they coming some hitting from? the boat, some hitting the water near the boat. Um, they seem to be coming from the direction of the cliff. Hmm. Take us over there. Are you are you crazy? I can't even see. I'm, I'm not trying to direct this into it. I gotta get us away from it. Use my crystal ball to help me buy out some clues in that area. Uh, you you can roll for that, but as you are being pelted with rocks, um, I will give you a minus one die to that check. Well, my crystal ball cancels that out then. Because <laughs> it gives me a plus one. Oh, good. <laughs> No. No. Okay. <laughs> Your crystal ball just has an error flash up that says "Sorry, ask later." <laughs> it's like a <laughs> magic eight ball. And then try again later. <laughs> Alright. Um what kind of a boat is this? Is it like a rowboat? Uh no, it it's a, it's a um it's a sailing boat. It's mm. got uh you know sails. It's not it's not absolutely massive, but it's pretty big. A sailing boat with sails. I do not know how to use a sailing boat with sails. Yeah, I don't either. I assume they have sails. Sailboats usually have sails, yeah. <laughs> um, is Max doing anything? He's um kind of trying to like shield his head and uh, get the the sails jibbed. The sails up. Um, um, sure, that's that's the word I was looking for. I will help him do that. Okay. Go into the where the rocks are coming from. Uh, Mike, I will get you to do a an agility. I guess that's the only thing I can think of that would be useful. Agility, agility and physique. physique. Yep. Uh, that is a lot of fours, but no sixes. No sixes. Okay. You're you're getting them unfurled, and it is working. But suddenly, a rock pelts through and tears the mainsail that you guys are trying to unfurl. And, and Max is immediately like, "Oh no, the mainsail! We can't, we can't sail without the mainsail." I really hope that's actually a thing in sailing, and I'm not. Just... The mainsail. It's broken. There's multiple <laughs> sails on this ship boat. Sure. <laughs> on this fishing boat? Okay. Yes. <laughs> Do you have oars? Uh, I mean, sure. Um, I like to call them the decisions, though, because you could choose to use this or this one. I'm just going to take That's, them from no. and begin rowing. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess I can't out. row. Hmm. I think this is a sign that we should go towards the rock. But there's nowhere to stop. Like we can't land there. We're just gonna basically risk crashing the boat right into the 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 the, the cliff face. No. You're a master fishman. I'm you wouldn't crash I your am boat. Not a master fish man. Oh, I saw you. I'm pretty sure you're a master fish man. 
And then the rocks suddenly kind of stop. See? Look, you guys are crazy, but can't say I'm not a little bit interested in seeing what happens. So he kind of rose you up uh, to <laughs> the, the, the cliff edge. He's not like We're right up against this because I still He's got like my a couple angle feet away from it. All right, I would like to examine the cliff. So, like I said, um, there are a bunch of holes in the cliff face. Look like they've been kind of bored out by birds. Um, and as you kind of look, kind of around at, at all of these different uh, holes in the. Uh, the, the, the kind of edge. Um, you see a very... You get a really weird um, sensation. And I'm going to make you roll a fear check. What do I do for that one again? You need uh, to roll... I believe it is... Logic or empathy? Didn't help me. Choose whether to tackle the situation with empathy or logic. Yes. Okay. Add additional dice equal to the number of player characters present. Our character, if you become frightened. Okay, so you both choose either logic or empathy, and you get a plus one because you have you have an, an additional. I'm rolling as well. Oh yes. Okay. Uh, okay. What are we at? Logic or empathy? Nope. Two successes. Oh, I supposed yeah. to roll an extra die because you're here. Yes. Yeah. Still no. Uh, no. Not as comforting Eagle. as I thought it was, I guess. Eagle, um, like, I don't want to say that you're scared of what you see because it's not. Just it's not terrifying. fear in the sense of like danger. It's fear in the sense of just. Like, totally abnormal, totally unnatural. Um, because what you see in one of the holes in the um, the cliff face is an incredibly small-looking uh, man with very tan skin. Um, both sides of his head are shaved, and his black hair stands up straight down the center. Um, he's wearing a leather kind of uh, loincloth, carrying a spear with a bunch of red paint, it looks like, on his face or whatnot. Um, and as you kind of look at him, um, you see him kind of grasp onto the cliff edge and somehow dislodge a massive chunk of it. He brings out like a, a piece of uh, a piece of rock that's like the size of a baseball, which just does not look like his frame should be able to support doing that. And he hurls it right at Max, hitting him square in the face and knocking him. Oh, that's so mean. So, and then he turns around and disappears. Seems to like walk into the rock itself. Follow it, Eagle. You gotta follow it. It's a half an inch tall. Yeah, and it literally we'll turns find and a way. walks into so the hole it was in only goes like an inch or two deep into the rock. Oh. And he literally walked through the back wall of rock. 
I would like to poke the rock. It is solid rock. Huh. I would like to stick the uh, barrel of my gun into the hole. You do. It is still solid rock. Is there anything else in any of these holes? Nope. Do a seance to predict that man's future? You what if I try to break off part of the rock? Like the do little it, break thing. the rock. Do it, Go ahead. Uh, do, um, I'm gonna get you to do a, a physique, a force physique check. Does he get a bonus from you cheering him on? Sure. Come on, break the rock. Do it. Do it. You can Real do it. Successes. Yeah. Okay. So you you're able to like, um, kind of pound a little bit and some of the very kind of face of it chips off but the wall is solid so like how this thing took a chunk out of it you you cannot understand because like you 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 feel like after doing that the amount of force required would be astronomical Does this ring a bell in terms of have I encountered any Vazen before that are small people? No, oh, sorry. Bye, Hillary. Thank you for checking in again. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of legends of little people in various cultures. Um, and your brains immediately think to like leprechauns from Ireland or like fairies from uh, Scandinavia. Right? Um, no. Fairies like milk, do they not? Fairies like milk? Like bowls of milk? Or am I misremembering that? <laughs> Do, 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 do. Maybe if I put it a different way, is there something that I could leave in the stone alcove as an offering that might coax these things out? Um... I would say, I mean, first of all, that's kind of, I feel like that's too direct of a question for me to answer because, like, what do we have on us right now? Because um, if I were to assume that it's a fairy, if you were to assume it's a fairy, uh, then I would say probably some kind of. Uh, object of either either personal value or yeah maybe food Does Max have uh, like a locket around his neck or anything like that? Max is starting to come too now, and it's just kind of like, what? What are we doing, guys? We're still, we're still here. I dreamed I got pelted by a massive rock. Oh! He looks down, and the baseball-sized like boulder that smacked him in the head is still sitting there. He's like, 
Don't mm. worry. We found what's taking the fish, and we're gonna fix it. Who are you again? But, but I thought we were friends. Don't, don't remember me? I mean, vaguely, again, just got, you know, potentially concussed from a rock. Maybe sit in the corner. Don't fall asleep, though, I hear that's bad. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, Mike, as you're looking at him, no, he doesn't have a locket around his neck. What do you, what do you have for trinkets? Eagle? I have my rifle and my knife. That's <laughs> it? I guess I should say Eagle does also have um, like a fiddle hanging from his belt. The no, wait, so you guys, you guys said you see in the thing. What 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 was it? What does it look like? Small. Well, yeah, because it's just kids, right? I knew it. That's what the mayor was always saying. Kids come out and play on the cliff a lot, do they? I mean, yeah, you know, you, you lose a kid every now and then, but that's kind of nature, right? You... Can you back that up a second? <laughs> <laughs> what? what? You tell the kids don't don't play by the cliff because you'll fall off the cliff. The kids inevitably play by the cliffs anyway, and then one of them falls off the cliff. And you, you... yeah, Martha's sad a little bit because her son was an idiot and fell over the edge, but we all know it's going to happen from time to time. Yeah, he's not wrong. I remember going to a family reunion where they were like, don't play by the cliff, and we were playing hide-and-seek, and one of my cousins fell down the cliff, and we lost her for hours. <laughs> you it's, can't it's, say he's it's, wrong. It's cliff problems, you know? That's what happens. We found her. She was fine. Well, okay, Martha's kid wasn't fine, but you know. Yeah. This one was fine. It's a little dirty, but watch well, kids. What up? Kids being kids, you know. I think we should cast out another line. Yeah, do a guess line. What the? Okay, I, I really think we should go back so I can like maybe. I cast a line. Medical. Okay, we're doing this. Okay. Is anybody else feeling a little, a little woozy? I'm gonna scare the fish, Max. <laughs> okay. Uh, does anybody else feel a little woozy? Max, just just don't go to sleep. You're gonna be fine. Okay. A number of hours pass, and and nothing else seems to happen. I'm going to pass the line to Eagle, and I would like, is there anything I can do with, like, for him? Like, for Max? Like, like, yeah, because I have some, some skills at medicine, but I don't, I don't yeah, have... You can do medicine, precision in medicine. Yeah? Yeah. How big are these holes? Uh, they're like, call them like four inches in kind of diameter. Oh, they're pretty big. Okay. Two successes for precision nice. medicine. Yeah, you kind of like you root around in your bag and you pull out some some herbs of some sort and kind of crush some. And uh, Max takes them pretty willingly because, you know, who wouldn't take strange leaves from strange women you just met who show them your ankles? Um, I give them some really good top shelf booze as well. Oh, perfect. Yeah. So remember, don't forget yeah. that. Yeah. And after a little bit, he's kind of like, oh, geez, thanks. That, I'm feeling a little bit better. I'm still <laughs> the a little pretend bit... booze I gave him. <laughs> I'm still feeling, you know, I'm a little bit, uh, still a little bit sleepy, but I'm, I'm feeling. Less woozy. 
but don't go to sleep. Look, guys, nothing's changed for like the last three hours. Can we go home now? What do you think, Eagle? Hi. I'm out of ideas. I'm gonna tap on the rock again. It's still rock. Hmm. You don't have any any tricks he can do? I can do tricks. Why can't you do tricks? They're eagle tricks. <laughs> what you can do? Can what do you I... Can you? I'd like to take one of my uh, cartridges. Okay. And uh, tear it open. Okay. And empty it into one of these holes. Okay. What kind of gun do you have? I assume it's like a flintlock rifle. <laughs> it just said rifle. You know, rifle from forever ago. Uh, 1850. A rifle. Is there a, uh, an equipment section in this book? So they had breech loading rifles. Yeah. Oh, I guess that would make sense. Yeah, it's the 1800s, not the 1600s. But I don't know... I don't know if the cartridge itself... Like, I don't know how it was... That's fine. We'll forget that plan. You put some kind of powder up there, I guess, because I'm assuming you're going to try and blow it up, it right? it's... I was going to light it, yes. Yeah, it says we have unpredictable flintlock rifles and muzzle-loaded muskets are the options. Okay, so then that's fine. You can still you don't need it from the from the cartridge necessarily. You put a little bit of gunpowder onto the, the hole. And you can light it. It 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 has a small kaboom, and a bit of the rock kind of falls away, but it's still just rock. You don't see any, like, tunnels bored deeper or anything into the rock itself. I want to find the little man again. Alright, well, I'm out of... The uh, <laughs> nap when uh, it blows up in your face, yeah. Eagle loses his nose. <laughs> bad. Looking like ideas. Baltimore walking around. <laughs> All right, yeah. Let's just let's 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 go home, okay? Okay. Takes you back to the city. We can go back out. Come back out first thing in the morning, though, right, Max? I mean, if you guys really need to, sure. I, I gotta I gotta try and source a new uh, a new mainsail for this thing. I don't think he's gonna say a new nose. <laughs> he's gonna hit in the face <laughs> of the rock. No, no, you see that hit me on like the, the top of the head, not not the face. Nothing, nothing messed up my beautiful face here. Did I ever tell you about my my aunt who won prettiest face in all of Quebec City um, back in uh, 1832? God. Well, you know, I always thought she was pretty, but I never thought she was like that pretty. But everybody in the family always thought she was like, you know. Just an absolute vision. So at the fair I mean, that was happening <laughs> at the fair that was happening during that year, the like the ten prettiest women in the, the city, you know, came up and my aunt was there, she was one of them, and the judges just poof, they were just blown away. Now I mean the rest of the lot was, you know was kind of slim pickings, but she uh she definitely won that competition, that's for sure. How come Max is from Quebec but he sounds like he's been raised in Brooklyn? different time accents were a little bit more malleable you know 
He's also <laughs> looks Irish. Yeah, what is this Irish Brooklyn man doing in Quebec? Look, it's called anachronism, okay? <laughs> My characters can be from wherever they want, Zoe. Which is Born and raised in Brooklyn. Quebec. Not an ounce of French in that man. Well, uh, do you want me to do a more uh, racist version of this accent then? <laughs> oh my god. No, he can be from Brooklyn, it's fine. My auntie, we would call her on Cachon in French. <laughs> we would call what? What? Never mind. Moving on. Um... So yes, Max leaves you guys at the dock. Guess what? It's another That's night in the boat. the boat. More paper cuts for me. <laughs> Hop into the boat. Wait, wait, wait. You guys, you guys are just sleeping in that boat over there? Yep. Wait, sorry, I gotta switch to his new accent. Uh, you, you're sleeping on the boat? <laughs> Ever since he's been hit in the face with that rock, he's real different. <laughs> Sudden no, no, no. French accent. Sacrebleu, <laughs> it's... it's... <laughs> You will you will come and stay with me and my wife and my four children. Isn't he eighteen? Four children. Why is this surprising? He probably got married at fourteen. I think infant mortality is a little bit uh, higher than that these days. Well, you know, we 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 were supposed to have six. A lot of twins but, uh... in there, but. They say once they make it past two, they are good to go. How many, how many bedrooms do you think he has in this house for this family of six? <laughs> One. Probably. We're sleeping on the couch, aren't we? I'm sleeping on the boat. <laughs> no, 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 please, please, I insist. <laughs> come, come and stay with, meet my wife, meet my, my kids. I mean, we should probably make sure he gets home safely, and his his wife's probably making dinner. Not fish, I'll bet. No, probably not fish. All right. <laughs> oh, excellent, excellent. Uh, <laughs> the, the, the dinner will be top notch, I swear. Um. Just follow me, follow me, and he leads you down uh, Main Street. This is when we find out his family's vegan. Of Quebec City. <laughs> um, and he, he, he stops in front of a large gated house, and he's just kind of like, oh, I mean, you'll need to excuse me, but uh, before, my, before my wife Tabitha and I can find a, a suitable dwelling of our own, we are, we are staying with her parents. Um, it is... And, oh uh, no, he uh, invited us to the in-law's house without asking them? the most uh, perfect situation, but it uh, is, is better than sleeping on the street, if you know what I mean. I mean, we were about to sleep in a boat. No, 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 nonsense. There are bedrooms enough for the two of you to uh, to sleep in the bed here. And he leads you in through the front door, and there's a butler and everything. He's just like... Uh, yes, um, Monsieur Max, good to see you. Uh, you, you brought guests, I see. Yes, yes, uh, they, they require their own rooms. Please, please have the maid prep the guest rooms. One for each of them. And Mr. Max, has your accent changed today? No, no, it has always been this way. <laughs> Are we suddenly speaking to Lumiere? You wanted this. You questioned where Did he was I... from before. I didn't say I wanted this. I was just curious why he sounded like he was from Brooklyn when he was born and raised in Quebec. Brooklyn's close <laughs> to Quebec. Is it? No. Okay, um, guess so we'll find this guest room. So the butler, the butler takes you up the stairs. So as you walk in, it's a grand entryway with a large. Uh, there's a large kind of dual staircase that goes up the side walls of the room that meet in the top, um, where there's a there's a, a vestibule up top leading to the bedrooms. The the uh, the the 
the butler walks you up the stairs and just kind of like, oh, I see you don't have any luggage to drop off, but I'll at least show you the rooms that uh, you'll be staying in. As we track mud into his house. He kind of looks down a little bit disappointedly, but doesn't say anything about it. Um, and, uh, what could we have tracked when we were following that guy? We probably have just as much mud on us as Max did. Shows you two, uh, two rooms towards the end of the hall. And just kind of like, uh, dinner will be in about 15 minutes. Uh, suggest you use the time to wash up. Yeah, Eagle is definitely uh, more dusty <laughs> than Max is. Okay. Let's get you to a powder room, Eagle. <laughs> you gotta get cleaned up for dinner. Absolutely not. Eagle, please. <laughs> Half the reason I can't sleep on that boat again is because I can't stand the smell of it. And we're outside. <laughs> now we're indoors. Where are you from now? <laughs> I don't know. I'm just pleading with you. <laughs> She's from she's from South Boston with that accent. <laughs> Moved right into Salem. Oh, oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. I guess I'll I'll get cleaned up and then find my way to wherever dinner is. All right, you you come downstairs and and just off the main kind of entryway, uh, the butler opens a door into a large uh, seating not seating area. What am, what am I trying to say? A a a, uh, a parlor of sorts um, with a number of couches. You see Max, who is now kind of cleaned up and he's wearing a um, a, a more of a you know uh, he looks a little bit more formal. He's wearing a bit of a, like a sport coat. Um, just kind of like, ah, my guests, thank you very much. Uh, I hope the rooms are to your, uh, to your liking. I know that, that butler is a cheeky one, but, but tell me, he, uh, he, 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 he met to your every, your every need? I mean, we have no needs, so yes. Excellent, excellent. Uh, this is my wife, Tabitha, and he leads you over to a, a woman um, who's not wearing, like, a, a a very kind of outlandish dress. She looks fairly kind of, um, fairly kind of, uh, I don't want to say normal. It's not the right word. Like, she looks, she's not, uh, Modestly dressed. Informal. Yeah, I guess informal yeah. and modest is probably the best way to say it. Um, mm -hmm. it's just like. She is a chatterbox. Watch out for this one. Um, she will talk your ear off if, if she's given the chance and she doesn't even, she just kind of slightly smiles and waves at the two of you. <laughs> uh, and these are our children. This is uh, Jean, uh, Mikhail, uh, Lafeo, and uh, Susanna. And and, um, yes, yes, it is. And they're all standing in a line in front of Tabitha, even the one who's like clearly like 12 months old and can barely walk. Um, and they each kind of wave at you in turn. Um, Tabitha happened to be pregnant right now. No, no, she's not. Oh, that's that unusual. we can see. Um, sorry, my wife is, is actively distracting me right now with the amazing t-shirt that she purchased. Um, <laughs> yes. Uh, so the, uh, he then kind of turns around and is just kind of like, ah, th this way, dinner, I've been told dinner is served. Um, I'm not going to keep this up because this is ridiculous and I can't keep doing that. You guys have a delicious dinner with the family. Um, 
and uh, it is a a, a seven course meal. Um, Jeez. The, the main course is uh, is is um, hare with with root vegetables. Yeah, like like rabbit. Oh, hair. Okay. Yeah. Oh, did you think there was like head hair? <laughs> it's like, what have we stumbled into? Uh, this yes, is the raised right braids. Yes, this this is what my wife needed to show me. <laughs> Give me the loot. <laughs> Pretty fur. Um. So, uh, yes, and you both uh, are able to go upstairs and and fall asleep. In, in lovely, uh, on lovely, luscious beds. Um, Max talked the whole dinner. Tabitha did not say a word. Um, I like her. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so that's that's how that one's ending. I'm not doing any more of that. <laughs> All right. I would like to get up first thing and uh, go looking for um, any fishermen going back out to that area. I will accompany him. Okay. Uh, so I guess then you guys get up and leave at about the same time as Max and he's just kind of like, oh, my friends, we are going back out today, right? That is the plan? Yep. Yep. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Uh, I, uh, I, I sourced uh, the mainsail yesterday, and, and the boat is in uh, ship shape, you could say. Uh, but I wouldn't. Ah, good, good one. Good one there, sir. Ah, uh, okay. Well, we will go. Off we go. Yep. Uh, and you, along with two other fishing vessels, Max kind of waves to the whole way as, as you're kind of traveling, head over to the same kind of area. Um, Why do I imagine he waves, but none of the other fishermen wave back? Oh, of course. <laughs> of course. He barely acknowledges he's there. Um, and, uh, yeah, so you get out there. All's quiet for a bit. Hey, take us over to the cliff. <laughs> but you cannot fish at the cliff. Yes, you can. Yeah. Uh, Same as yesterday. I guess you. I guess you're right. And he heads over to the cliff. After about an hour, the other two leave because it's clear they're not getting any fish. Okay. Yeah, you go to the cliff. Yeah, I want to keep an eye on the cliff for little people coming out of it. Okay. Um, so, after, like I said, after the first hour, the other two boats turn around and leave. Um, after about another half hour, Max kind of looks at both of them and just kind of like, wow, we're not even getting a nibble here. It's sacre bleu. Uh, we, should, we should go back and, and call it a day and, and be more productive. Nothing has changed in the cliff in the hour and a half. Do we have a line cast? I don't know. Do you have a line cast? We should. Yes. Okay. No nibbles. Are there any signs? Of activity in these uh, little alcoves? Um... Like, has anything been in here since we left yesterday? No, not that you can seem to see. Okay, Eagle. Eagle. Hit me up. Hit me up. Do some stuff. I make it look like there's a ton of fish on this boat. We get back. We show the mayor. Look, there's so many fish in the water now. We fixed the problem. We take the cash and we skedaddle to Toronto. Now, what about the little things in the wall? They're eating plenty of fish. They're fine. They're happy. Let them live.
No. <laughs> <sighs> okay what are you guys gonna do <sighs> i'm gonna knock on the wall it is solid rock does anybody answer the hole no okay All right, I give up. Back to the city we go. Back to the city. Nothing but failure. Yes, as you get back to the dock, the uh, the mayor is down there again, um, again trying to talk some uh, some sense into the fishermen who have come back, who are still very irate. Um, and as he sees the two of you, he's just kind of like, well, is, has there been any progress? What's what's the story? There's no fish. You've overfished the waters. That, no, that, that can't make sense. We're on an ocean. How do you overfish an ocean? What do you mean, how do you overfish an ocean? You catch too many fish. Years. It's with like... There's, we have like 50 boats that go out and catch fish you're telling me that's that a lot of boats that the like the thousand fish they bring back every couple of days is is decimating the population yes no I don't th that are you questioning me because I'm a woman whoa no, just because yeah. you're from Boston. <laughs> <clears throat> we should have went with my plan. What was your plan? <laughs> oh. <laughs> to fake it. <laughs> Illusion a whole bunch of fish. And... Fake it till you make it. <laughs> it would have been like, ooh, sweet people, thank you so much for bringing back all of our fish. Take all our money. <laughs> all right all next right. time we do your plan <laughs> okay I remember that. uh at this point mr johnson runs into the two and just kind of like hey sorry uh i mean i don't know what you guys got up to last night but uh sure anything else just hanging on to here Ready to go to Toronto. I hop into the boat, sit down. I want to swing by a cliff on the way out. Uh, oh, okay. Gets back into his little boat, gets the engine going. Okay, which way is this cliff? I will direct him to, to the lagoon at the cliff. Okay. As you as you approach the cliff, um, you see the little the little man that you saw yesterday. The little man sitting in one of the holes. And as you approach, actually, you see in the holes, kind of all around, uh, about like thirty of these little people, um, all of well, there's some men, some women. Some are fatter, some appear skinnier. I will try. Hello. <laughs> They're just watching. I will hmm. 
at the top of the group, one of them again kind of grabs a chunk of the rock beside He's going to throw a rock at us! A much bigger size, almost the size of like a beach ball. He doesn't throw it at the boat, but it gets thrown out into kind of the water in between the cliff face and the boat, making a large splash as it happens. I will fire off my rifle. Just at them? No. Just fire it. Up in the air? Yeah. Okay. Dangerous. Uh, okay. Um... Are you trying to scare them? I'm going to get you to roll ranged combat for that. Just in case. Because if you don't get any successes, you know, guns can jam and stuff. Can accidentally shoot the little gaffers? Maybe. Couldn't hit them if I tried. One, two, three, four successes. Excellent. Yeah, you um, loud. So you you stand yourself, you know, puff out your chest a little bit, hold the rifle, fire it off into the air. Um and suddenly you see them start clapping for you. And they actually start like trying to kind of Backing you guys forward. John, take us over. I, I, what What are you guys talking about? All I I saw a bunch of rock fall off, and then yeah, take us to the rock. You're shooting the gun, and and I I don't. Are you guys seeing something over there? I don't I don't know what's going on. Take us to the rocks. That that seems dumb. Cause take us the to boat, the rocks. Boat. No, we're not doing that. The boat will will shatter upon those rocks. I will shatter you if you do not take us to the rocks. Dad, I don't... No? I'm gonna reload my rifle. Look, we are a safe I think distance. This is a good time to strike fear into John. <laughs> <laughs> of course it is. If you would like <laughs> I would like to strike fear. Uh... She's been waiting on that one. <laughs> uh, choose a victim in your zone. Target must pass a logic or empathy test. Oh, man. Fear check. Fear check against me. Hey, what do I got to be? Here, John. What do I got to beat? Uh, it just says the target NPC must pass a logic or empathy test. I don't okay. so know. Have them and then they get fear one if they don't. Okay, no, he did not pass. So he gets fear like, one. You know, you know what? Fine. If you got a death wish, you direct this over there. I'm, I'm not being responsible for this thing. Fallen, this thing crashing like that. This situation is scary for him. It's very scary for him. Okay. To the rocks. Driving, driving the boat into the rocks. Yes. You drive the boat into the rocks. John is 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 babbling the whole time. He's just like, "What are you? You're crazy, man. We're gonna crash into there. We're all gonna die." This is not how I wanted to go out. These people's mail is never going to get there, and they're going to wonder what's happened. Oh, no, what, what's Mom talking about for the holiday festival again? Everything's going to go nuts. And then the, the, the nose of the boat touches the rock, and it goes into the rock. Yeah. And the boat just continues yeah. to travel yeah. Yeah. through the solid rock wall. And three of you on, on the boat suddenly as you kind of come out the other side of it, you find yourself in a kind of dimly lit um, tavern of sorts 
Uh, it's hard to tell fully. There, there's, there's large trees, a lot of grass. The the boat is obviously sitting in, in a pool, like in a, in a, um, in a pond of sorts. Um, and uh, there are a ton of these little people just I... hanging around in kind of this clearing. Um, they have tiny little tents, tiny little fires set up. Um, they're, they're dancing and, and singing, uh, and, uh, as you kind of enter in there, you see that it looks like a number of them are kind of, like, competing kind of against each other in, in, in for some kind of fun. Um, they seem to be, like, again, trying to, like pick up massive boulders, like absolutely huge. We're talking, you know, um, three, four hundred feet or three, four hundred pounds. Um, they're picking them up on their own to kind of like prove or to best each other. Um, one of them picks up an entire tree to, to kind of show off to the group. When we get through the rock, I want to lean into John. Just aggressively whisper at him and be like, Don't you dare doubt us again. Who the heck are you people? So I'm just gonna like put my finger over his mouth and be like, Shh, Are we did dead? You... Did he Shh. die? Is that what happened? Don't you ever doubt us again. What are we doing now? Are you going <laughs> Um as that as the boat kind of clears the rock and is fully in the in the the area now the the group kind of stops all of the the dancing and, and music kind of stops and they all kind of stare up at you guys one of them um looking much older um Still fairly fit, though. Still, like, kind of two and a half inches tall. Um, steps to the kind of front of the group. Again, kind of looking at you guys. Um, like, points at Ego. And then turns around and, again, like, picks up an entire tree. Um, like a Challenging. six foot tall... Uh, tree. He pulls the thing out of the ground by its roots and you turns challenge. and just kind of like slams it onto the ground beside him. Go pick up that tree. <laughs> you said we go with my plan. The next plan is my plan. This is my plan. Pick up that tree. I... <laughs> there are other trees here? Yes. I you would like to try and shoot a leaf off of a tree. Just just a leaf? Like you're just kind of shooting into the tree or, or are you trying to like signal? I want to sever, sever a stem and cause a leaf oh. to fall. Oh. Okay. Show precision. Okay. Uh, do go ahead. Do a do a ranged combat precision check. It's gonna be hard though. I'm gonna tell you. Yep, yeah, it will. I only got one success. I'm so, telling you, you should have went over and ripped the tree out of the ground. It, like it I doesn't told. clip. You hit the leaf, and it kind of like eats out a section of the leaf. But they don't know what your plan was. They might might think that's what you were trying to do. The 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 the, the, the person who challenged kind of looks up at it, looks back over at you, still kind of expectantly, doesn't do anything. You're gonna have to beat up the tree. Is there a medium-sized rock around? 
How, like how big is medium size? Something in the 100 pound range. Sure. I would like to try and lift that. Okay. Use force physique. You're a, a hunter, oh, eh, Mike? That's not good. I am. Did, did you try and use your marksman for that shot? Uh... You have the marksman talent to gain plus two to ranged combat. I don't know if it would count Everybody here. Uh, page 50, if that helps you. No, I took the Bloodhound talent. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, uh, the, yeah. I mean, the rock, it's like kind of wet. It's covered in moss. You can't really get a grip. It's... Uh, you you get it up, but it kind of like looks really awkward and doesn't feel as kind of impressive as you want it to. Um, you drop it back down. He's still kind of staring at you. All right. All right. All right. All right. I'm going to reload the rifle. Okay. And I'm going to fire again. And I want it to come within like two inches of this guy. All right. Going to be hard. Go ahead. Uh, just one success. Your shot is wider than you want it to be. Um, it clears over his head by like a foot. It doesn't hit anybody else. Um, still kind of looking at you. All right, let's try a different way. I'm going to take the fiddle off my belt. Okay. And I'm going to play it. <laughs> All right. All right, bro, let's do, a, let's do an inspiration empathy roll. Oh, good. <laughs> Two ones. Uh, I I think you just he's Eagle's just feeling a little bit flustered after the the failed attempts to um to best this guy. Sure am. He's the, the, the other the opponent is starting to look bored. Um What if we what, Zoe? No, I said uh oh. Uh oh. He tore a tree out by the roots, did he? Yep. Alright. There's one last thing I wanna try. Okay. I would like to shoot him. Damn. Okay. Three successes. Yep. 
you hit him square in the head. And basically, oh. because of the size of him, the bullet basically just shreds his head. Oh. Oh, you've killed um, this man. I'm oh, sorry. I like, you were, you, were you trying to hit hit some hit him somewhere else? To, to maim? Nope. It blows his head clean off. Um, I mean, anyone who can lift a tree. My bullet can't go through that tree. <laughs> And uh, the rest of the group kind of looks at the headless leader as it then falls to the ground. Looks back at you. Just kind of stand behind John. Starts clapping. I think you're their new leader. And then they go back to singing and, and dancing and playing and everything like that. Totally got over it real quick. The um, the, the 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 current in the kind of lagoon area, you notice, is starting to draw the boat back towards the uh, the rock wall. Give them a command. Tell them to stop taking the fish. Come on. You said we um. could do my plan. <laughs> All right, fine. Stop. Taking the fish. Some of them kind of turn and look at you. And... Yeah. And they just keep... Um, I think that works. I'm assuming you made it back onto the boat, though. As the boat is... Slowly yes. listing out of the cavern. It exits from the rock itself again um you guys are suddenly back out in the in the sun john kind of is just like why i'm never taking a job from these people ever again well john you had a good time and, look we're just we're not stopping again until we get to toronto okay Fine. And as you guys start to head back down the St. Lawrence, behind the boat, you're starting to see the water churning more and more as though hundreds and thousands of fish are starting to... Uh, oh, we should have went back for the money. Kind of stir up uh, the currents and whatnot. I t my plan worked. And I think, <laughs> given the way things are going, Toronto Band, that that's where we're going to stop for today. We rescued the fish. We all, we all learned a, a valuable lesson about um, doing tasks not for the money, but for the good of them and for the betterment of other people. Um, and I'm yeah. sorry not because Eagle just needed to do it for himself and Ruby wasn't going crazy with the little man. <laughs> you sure? We didn't do it for the money at all. No, of course not. Nope. Some of us did. Some and of us now, are happy sleeping on boats. Yeah. And now next time we will be in Toronto. And you guys finally get your headquarters. Hooray! I dragged wow, it out for another hooray. session. Um, <laughs> for now, though... I will write location Toronto down here. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, still, it's a really weird game. I'm like to more and more. Um, yeah, once again, I've been Cody up in your Game Master. Uh, for the Crash Course. Crash Course and CCCRPGs on Twitter and Instagram. Um, Mike, Zoe, do you guys have any final thoughts? Hey, you just no. gotta listen to Ingrid. Alright, everybody. Well, until next time, uh, we'll be playing more Basin. See you later. <laughs>